Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. Make sure to check in the description notes below the video where you will find links to all of my online shenanigans, including how to get my patterns to knit up for yourself, how to join the Watch Barbara Knit Facebook group, how to get my merchandise, and where to support me on Patreon. Today, I have a cable without a cable needle tutorial for you and if you want to jump right to that I will put a timestamp right up here and we'll see y'all later now if you'd like to stick around and talk for a moment um so this is an old video I mean this right now is me like right now 2022 but the tutorial is actually an old video. I've been looking through my old videos, believe it or not, I have been making YouTube videos since 2016. That's really 16, 17, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. It's like seven years. It's, it's, it's a long time. So I thought I'd go back and look through old videos and find the ones that I really think have a lot of good information on them or a particularly good demonstration that some of y'all might have missed because you just weren't here watching them and you haven't found them yet through wandering through YouTube. Now, I wanna share a few things with you about this upcoming video. This one is from February of 2016. So it's one of the very first videos I put up. And I can honestly say I was still at the point where I was unsure about putting my face on the internet. I was just a lot of self-conscious issues going on there. And I was just like, I don't know. I don't know if I can talk to a camera. I don't know if I could do it. So all my videos were all of my hands. They were all top down. A couple things about my hands. So you can see in these video, this video that's coming up that, um, <laughs> I have my nails painted, which I thought, you know, to make nice videos, I had to have like my nice nails painted. And you'll see that my nails even match the yarn that I'm knitting with. Obviously, um, that fell by the wayside when I realized that trying to present a level of like perfection was really not who I am. And it, it was not the voice that I have ended up using in my videos. So it's great information. I think it's an excellent tutorial. You will, those of you who have been watching for a while may recognize it. If you remember when it first aired, let me know in the comments because um, I would love to know that. You'll definitely see a difference in style, but the info is good because let me tell you, cable needles can be super fiddly and super annoying. Stick around after the tutorial and I will show you a few patterns that you can use your newfound ability to cable uh, to create. There are two sets of terminology used to describe cables. They can be described as either right or left, or you can see them as either front or back. When you have a right, what they're referring to, and left is the direction that the cable slants once it has been made. So this is a right because it's slanting to the right, and this is a left because it's slanting to the left. That terminology is telling you what the cable is gonna look like when it is done. I prefer the front back style terminology because that tells you what is going to happen with the first set of stitches you're addressing. So if you're doing a one over one cable, it tells you that this first stitch is going back, it's held to the back, and the front, the second stitch is gonna come over front creating your right leaning. So, to cable without a cable needle, this is, we're going to do a right or back first. So we know this stitch is going back. So we take our right needle, insert it through the front leg of the second stitch, and then what I do is I pinch these two together tight, trapping them against the needle so they're not going anywhere and just slip them off and as you can see this one that's not on a needle anymore but it's trapped is not going anywhere so i slip that back on my left hand needle then i put 
that stitch on and just knit them. So I have created a right leaning cable. To do the same thing, to make a front cable or a left leaning cable, with front, it tells you this first stitch, we're going one over one, is going to be, would be held to the front. So if you had a cable needle, you'd put this on a cable needle and hold it to the front. But since we're doing it without the cable needle, we're going to take this right hand needle and insert it through the back of the second stitch. And again, with my fingers, pinch it against my right needle, so I can just slip them both off easily. And then it's, this is the loop that was the first stitch on the needle. I'm just slipping it back on. And then I have the stitch that was going in the behind right there. And then you just knit them. And as you can see, here we have our right slanting cable, and here we have our left slanting cable. You can do this for more than one over one stitches. Uh, you can go two over two, and some people can go three over three. It just depends on your level of confidence. So now we have the two over two, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Again, we know since we want it slant right, this is a back cable, so these first two stitches are going to go behind or to the back. I'm going to again take my right hand needle, insert it under these two stitches, the front legs, take my fingers and pinch it hard, trap those stitches against the needle, slip it off, and see these two back stitches aren't going anywhere so that I can easily pick them up with my left hand needle, slip them over, we have made the cable. Then I return the held stitches and knit them. And we have created a right slanting or back cable. I will do your left slanting or front cable. Now we know that these two stitches need to go to the front front. So again, we take our right needle and insert it through the back stitches. You'll notice that with this thumb, I'm pushing up against these stitches, so they're not going to pop off the end. So if you can see that, I'm inserting my right needle through the back legs of this third and fourth stitch, trapping this with my thumb, and then pressing. I'm pinching together and pressing it. I could just slide it right off. And those front stitches aren't going anywhere until I pick them up with my left hand needle, move them over, return the stitches, and then knit them. Just as simple as that. I really prefer using this technique because when you're only doing one over one or two over two, getting out your cable needle is kind of fussy. And if you're doing a lot of cables, you don't want to be putting the cable needle down and picking it back up. I hope that that all made sense to you and you now have the confidence to attack cables without a cable needle. And as promised, I have a few patterns to suggest to you to use your newfound cabling skills. So first up, this is the actual yarn. <laughs> that was being used in that demo. It is a fast, fun, chunky uh, cowl called Corundum Ridge. Corundum means diamond, and the cables are arranged so that they create an overall diamond pattern. Now, all of this texture here is like exaggerated garter, and what that means is it's like three or four rows of stockinette, of, um, stockinette like three or four rows of just knit on the face and then three or four rows of just pearl on the face. I think it might just be two rows. It's been a long time since I've looked at that pattern, uh, but it is a really straightforward. They're actually uh, slip stitch cables to make them really pop out of that deeply corrugated back 
ground, but it is a fast, fun, and definitely you're gonna want to just use the cableless technique because you don't wanna be <laughs> picking up and putting down that cable needle so frequently. So this is Corundum Ridge. It takes about 220 yards of bulky weight yarn on a size 10 and a half needle. Next, this is a very early a pattern of mine that I am still absolutely in love with. It is called In Uffish Thought, it is a side to side asymmetrical shawl. It starts at uh, one point and then grows. It has a very simple texture pattern in the middle. And what's really cool about it is how you make these teeth along the edge. And I know that you're looking at this and being like, but, but this is about cables. So at the end of each one of those little, little teeth is a tiny, tiny, it's a two over two little tiny cable and they are so cute and so sweet. And this is not a case of not wanting to use a cable needle because of frequency of cables. It's you do it so infrequently that you don't want to be messing with that cable needle. So you're literally only doing one cable every couple of rows, but it makes this super sweet little edge. Also note that this pattern does great in variegated yarns. So it takes around 460 plus yards of fingering weight yarn to get to this side, but it really is flexible. So if you just have a single skein of fingering weight yarn and it clocks in around 440, you can still do this. It's just, you're not gonna get as many teeth. And if you have two skeins, you can just keep on going. It's that kind of pattern that repeats and repeats and repeats, okay? And then, you might have noticed this on my silent partner. This is definitely one that you want to cable without a cable needle because of how many cables you have to make on this. This is a basket weave pattern. I had a very challenging time actually um, photographing this one, which is why I have it here to show to you. So this is a semicircle shawl. Okay, I'm going, the name of it is Till There Was You, and you take 330 yards of bulky weight yarn on a size 10 and a half needle. I like bulky, bulky cables, if you can tell. So let's go back to showing you full screen. So here we go, right? So this has, I really love this detail. This has, just like in Uffish Thought, it has a cable that goes over the edge. And I think it looks really great. It's instead of like having a garter edge or something, it's to prevent it from roll, but it also has a pretty detail. And the body of it, when you're doing your increases, is just stockinette. But then look at this deeply textured, these are two over two cables. And they look absolutely amazing. Ugh. Just gorgeous. Um, so I really like this shawl. And actually, so you can do it out of any, you can do it out of any bulky weight yarn. It would look really good in just about any color. I chose to do it in this beautiful winter white because I really visualize this as a winter wedding shawl. And it's kind of one of the reasons of why it has the name it has, Till There Is You. There we go. This is Till There Was You. And another thing that you will be happy that you know how to cable without a cable needle. Ah, oh. I may edit that singing part out. <laughs> so thank you all very much for joining us on this look back at an older video. As I said, I wanted to highlight it because a lot of y'all might not have seen it. And it is really, it's a good tutorial, even if I'm trying to be very, very serious in it. And it's cabling without a cable needle makes cables so much more fun. And frankly, to my opinion, so much less intimidating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.